money. Yeah, bro. Hey, good evening, everybody. So we were discussing last week, <clears throat> we're looking at some of these shilas to do with having a website running on Shabbat. Uh, so it was interesting. I saw something in the news this week. There was somebody who you may or may not have seen this, but somebody who clearly was not in the Shurim, um <laughs> was uh, on one of these websites on Shabbat. Uh, there was an ele electronic store in Israel, and he was uh, horrified, this person, the vigil to find, and he wanted to go and order his electronic goods on Shabbat, and he went onto the website. This was the message that he found. I was not on the website on Shabbat. But this is what he posted afterwards. And he told people he was very upset about it. And how could this be? And what's the coercion? But basically, the website has a page. When you open it up, it has a picture of Shabbos candles. It shows you what the parsha is. And it says, Golesh Yakar, dear customer, surfer, whatever. This website is a, is a website which keeps Shabbat and Chag. And therefore, you can't surf on it right now. The website will come back to a regular service half an hour after Shabbat or Chag and has a countdown timer, which is obviously automatic, telling you when the website is going to open. So these are things which are, which are not just theoretical, but very, very much, um, you know, practically relevant. Um, we spoke about how, looking at this, the considerations, as to if one is the owner of the website, I mentioned that there are six different considerations that come up in the Chuvot, which may or may not be reasons not to operate the website. Five of them we spoke about. The sixth one we haven't spoken about yet. And I want to speak about the sixth one here because this is an issue, again, which may or may not in the end of the day be relevant to the website or not. But it's an issue which comes up in many, many, many shilas that come up now about Hilchot Shabbat, new questions coming up all the time. And it's really, it's a um, very central topic. So the five issues we did discuss, right, we mentioned the issue of Lifnei Iver, of putting a stumbling block and whether that was, that was relevant. We said, according to many poskim, for various reasons, having the website operating is not in and of itself necessarily a violation of Lifnei Ver. We spoke about the fact that there might be a, a hana'a, you know, benefit here from Chilul Shabbat, in terms of Shachar Shabbat, in terms of receiving, uh, receiving monetary reward, right? We spoke about the issue of commerce, of doing business. And we spoke about as well the issue of Marit Ayin, which again is probably not an issue when it's uh, everybody knows that it's all automated. We said, of course, there's a great, going to be a great distinction between whether the website is just a content site that offers news and information and disinformation, which is usually the case these days. But that that was one uh, that is one category versus where it is commerce. You know, like this case where you have a shop, and in the same way that people wouldn't consider, you know, keeping their store open. Uh, on Shabbat to do business, the same way you would close the website as they've done here, uh, so as not to do business on Shabbat. The sixth issue that comes up, and again, this is something which comes up in many, many different contexts, is what's called different names in the post game, whether it's Ziluta de Shabbat or Zilzul Shabbat, right? Disparaging, not, uh, not trying, you know, disrespecting the Shabbat itself. We actually mentioned this slightly different context. We mentioned this a couple of weeks ago. We spoke about Amir al Ochrim asking a non-Jew to, uh, to perform Malachah on Shabbat, and th three different explanations as to what the source of that prohibition is. The Rambam, the way he explains is that because we're worried Shabbat's going to become light in your eyes, you're going to come to disrespect it, comes to this idea of, of Zilzul Shabbat. Ultimately, people will treat it in a way that it is, that, that it is not Shabbat. And so this question comes up. You know, the, the, the uh, great question is where it applies and where it doesn't apply. It comes up many, many different questions. I mentioned what's been in the news. There's been in the news this week as well. I don't know. All, I'm not familiar with all the details. I'm certainly not here to talk politics. But there was a question. You know, you have all sorts of we places, not websites, real sites, right? Museums and the like, which were open on Shabbat. You know, the, and they were saying a person doesn't have to pay to go in. You can, you can walk in. You can visit. You can uh, go, go to all these places. You aren't technically transgressing anything. Is that... Uh, is that an issue of Shabbat? We hear about this uh, every now and again. You have athletes, right? And people entering sports competitions. Technically speaking, I'm not necessarily going to break any, any laws of Shabbat, but can I go and, and can I compete or can I watch it? You know, the old question people always used to ask, you know, Rabbi, can I keep the TV on, you know, from before Shabbat, before, you know, technically speaking, I'm not, uh, I'm not doing anything. But yeah, and all of these questions and many others, for example, you know, can you have a, the post scheme discussed, you have an automatic bread maker, which works on a timer. Huh? You don't do anything. You put in all the, you put in the flour, you put in all the ingredients before Shabbat, you set it on a timer. 
wake up on Shabbat in the morning, you have freshly baked challahs, you have an automatic coffee machine, all sorts of questions which come up. And one of the points which the Poskim discuss is this idea here of, of Zilzul Shabbat, of you know, dis disrespecting, disparaging the Shabbat. Probably one of the primary sources for this idea is the Ramban. The Ramban in Pashat Emor, he talks about this. The Ramban tells us that you know, Shabbat is called, in the Torah, it's called Shabbat, but it's also called a Shabbaton. What is a Shabbaton, right? So in modern Hebrew, a Shabbaton means a you know, public holiday. But, uh, but a Shabbaton means much more than that. Ramban explains, he says, you know, when it comes to Shabbat, let's imagine if we kept Shabbat just on a Doraita level, we didn't keep any of the Darabanans, and he paints this whole picture. He says you could have, you know, all the stores would be open and the shopkeepers would bring their, would bring their wares and they would open up and they would sell their goods and people would come and they would buy and they would sell and they would work and they would do everything. And they wouldn't write down. They wouldn't do. It just gives this whole description whereby you would not do a single malacha, the orita. You would not do a single malacha on, on Shabbat, but, it's, but it wouldn't be Shabbat. It wouldn't be Shabbat. And he says, that's the Shabbaton. And he says the Ramban that that would be Although you haven't technically done any malacha, any single malacha doraita, you've, you've uh, uprooted completely the concept of Shabbat, and therefore on a doraita level, that would not be Shabbat. There's not, one, not any one action that we can point to, but overall you've, you've, uh, you, you've removed completely Shabbat. So that is, that is this idea. You know, sometimes some of these questions come up and people ask and they say, okay, so you're saying technically, you know, technically speaking, you've kept Shabbat, you haven't done anything wrong, you haven't transgressed anything, but you rabbis are just trying to make life difficult for us and telling us, you know, we, we can't do this. It's not in the spirit of Shabbat. The point is that no, sometimes this is what people call the spirit of Shabbat. That is within the law itself. Sometimes that is within the right of the Rabbanan, but that is within the, uh, the halachot of Shabbat. So that is this idea, perhaps of Zilzul Shabbat, of Ziluta the Shabbat. So they discuss it over here in the context of the website. Would in our specific context, would this be a, uh, would this be a consideration or not? So. There's a tshuva in the Igrot Moshe, Rabbi Moshe Feinstein, which he writes a tshuva, was addressed uh, to, his, uh, to his grandson, Rabbi Tendler, and he was asked him about what he calls a more sha'ot, what we would call today a sha'on shabbat. Right? Using the, uh, the time switches for different things. Nowadays, right, there's hardly a home in, uh, in Amistral that keeps shabbat that doesn't have a multitude of time switches operating different devices and certain things. So Rabbi Moshe Feinstein was asked, you know, could you use a Sha'on Shabbat? Let's say, for example, if there was a way in which, again, technically speaking, you haven't uh, transgressed anything else. You could have a Sha'on Shabbat uh, operating your oven, operating, you know, keeping your food, uh, uh, cooking your food and all, all sorts of things. And he answers that even if you could find a, a scenario whereby, again, you haven't uh, transgressed anything else, but he says it's not appropriate. He says it wouldn't be right. He says, what is this going to lead to? Where's, where's it going to go? You know, you'll say, Strictly speaking, you're not doing anything. You haven't operated anything on Shabbat. So you'll tell me that, you know, you'll have factories. You'll have entire factories working on a time switch, on a Moresh Sha'ot, as he calls it, because it's been set up before Shabbat. You haven't done anything. But, but it's not Shabbat. He says that uh, when it comes to light switches, well, it's very interesting, because at the time he's writing the Shabbat, this had already become, seemingly already become an established practice to turn on and off lights via timer. He says there it's different. He says, because in any case, uh, we, find, we find scenarios whereby you would have lights coming on and off. Obviously, people wouldn't be doing it themselves, but where you could ask, there was a practice, many communities asking non-Jews for different reasons, for Sudot Shabbat, for, uh, you know, mitzvah. and he says, even though there are machlokot in these things, and his practice was to be stringent, there are those that are lenient and it already exists. So therefore, it's not, uh, it's not any worse than that. But for other uses, to expand the use of these time switches, and the truth is, we have expanded the use of time switches beyond what, uh, what, uh, what, what Rav Moshe was, uh, was allowing or was recommending. But nonetheless, he says, he's opposed to it. He says, he also has a tremendous chiddush. He says, if it was, had been in the times of Chazal, when they made the Gzera of Amiral and Ochri, they would have included you know, the, the time switches as well. And there were those who argued with him. And, but the point is, you see, there is this concept of, uh, of, of, of Zilzul Shabbat, and that is a, that is a consideration in the, in the halacha. So here in this uh, Bamaraba Zak, they bring another tshuva of the Chalkat Yaakov. Chalkat Yaakov was of Breish right, in Switzerland, and he uh, is asked a question about, it says here, yeah, Maskira Electronic, the electronic secretary. I had a look in the, uh, in the tshuva inside. He seems to be talking about 
some sort of a voice recording machine, right? a phone, phone uh, answering system. And it seems to be, the situation was, it had to be operated manually. You had to turn it on um, before Shabbat in order that, the, uh, that, that it should be taking messages for you. And he says, is that allowed? You have an office. The office is closing for Shabbat. But you want to leave this uh, machine on. You want it to be taking messages. And after Shabbat, you can come and you can find out what appointments you missed and when the appointments are booked for and the orders, etc. cetera. Um, is that allowed? So he writes this Shiva, and actually very interesting. The Shiva, here he says, technically speaking, I don't think there's an issue, but he says it's forbidden. And he says the following. I'll, I'll read you some of what he says. He says uh, like this. He says, He says, and things like this, we say, be very, very careful, sages, with your words. You see the foresight here, right? He says, he's just talking about an answering machine. He couldn't have imagined, you know, some of the technologies that we have today and that we will have very shortly. But he says, uh, it, it's moving forward all the time. He's writing this for him in science fiction, but we know this exists today, right? You could have a shop. The shop opens automatically. You know, imagine such a thing. You go to a shop and you buy your you buy your goods, and there's not even a, somebody there. You just do it do it all by yourself. Right? Can you imagine such a thing? That that exists. The next stage, you know, there are there are places they have stores. Amazon has developed where everything has got sensors. You don't even have to go to a self checkout. Where you go, you walk into the you you walk around the store. You pick things up off the shelves. Everything's you just put it in your uh, you put it in your basket and you walk out. It's all, it's all worked out the sensors. You've signed up before. You've got a subscription. It's paid automatically. What would we say? Such a situation there. Well, there's no, uh, you're not doing anything. So he says, this is where, it, where it's going. And there are all these, uh, this technology is, is moving forward. What's going to come out of this is, It's going to come out he says, you'll have a scenario where a person will therefore be sitting in the Beit Midrash, he will be sitting in his Shulchan Shabbat, he's singing his Mirod, singing his Tudot, his office, everything is just going, you know, like, like, like any other day. And, and he goes on and he says, he's very, very wary about this. And therefore, he says, we have to invoke this principle of Zilzul Shabbat, we have to be careful as to, uh, as to that, that it shouldn't go too far. Okay, but we'll carry on with that tomorrow. We'll see exactly what he says, what his conclusion is, related back to our website. And some of the interesting uh, contemporary questions that come up as well. Rabbi Hanania ben Akash Amar says, "Karish Baruch Hu lezakot et Yisrael." If you have a bad time, it's what Shnei Amar, then I have a bad time. It's good. Yagdil to Rav Yadu.